at this point, we all know the routine of taking standardized tests. The hours of preparation, the endless nights up coming to the big day, and of course, physically filling in the bubbles. All of this effort builds up into one important Saturday. And this, in a way, shows how each and every one of our lives is trapped in a bubble. As a senior, having taken the SAT and ACT, I have to admit, I didn't even know what their purpose was until the end of sophomore year. I didn't even know what a GPA was. After learning that tutoring now is considered the norm for test preparation, I was lucky enough to have seven tutoring sessions total. Any more would have progressed into a gaping hole in my parents' wallet. I was clueless to the whole standardized testing thing, and I felt ill-prepared to my, my own personal situation. The whole process scared me. I went into my first standardized test, the ACT, with three tutoring sessions under my belt, and I happened to score the highest out of the five tests I took. I took a total of three ACTs and two SATs. The other four tutoring sessions I took after my first ACT were clearly a waste of money and a waste of time. But you see, that's just me. For some people, tutoring is essential, and for others, it's not possible. It's just too expensive, which I think is fundamentally unfair. For me, I didn't even bother with the SAT, but that didn't make my ACT experience any less stressful. I had a tutor once a week for two-hour sessions, and my time slot happened to be Sunday nights from 9 to 11. Although my tutor bumped up my score five points, the time that I spent with him was tedious and dreadful. When the day finally came, a problem always seemed to arise. One time, I had to go to the bathroom during my test, and that's all I could really think about throughout the entire second half of the test. Another time, I woke up feeling terrible. I personally think I may have had an allergic reaction to the test. <laughs> I never felt 100% during any of these tests that I took. And to this day, I feel as if I never truly performed to the best of my ability. Now, how is that fair? It really isn't. There are many people who have criticisms and opinions on standardized tests. Here in Florida, the governor and his administration are currently considering new legislation about the issue of standardized testing being used as measurements of a school's success, a teacher's impact, and a student's deserving of graduation. The people who are most against the dizzying array of standardized tests are the teachers themselves. They are no longer able to teach as they please because of the demands of test preparation. Imagine what it feels like to be a teacher attempting to teach his or her AP curriculum, but all he or she sees is an ocean of students with their heads down in an SAT and ACT practice exam. Don Katzman, co-founder of the Princeton Review and an educational entrepreneur, was referred to in an article titled, Princeton Review, Founder Blast the SAT. These tests measure nothing of value. Katzman states that when criticizing college admissions officers, the officers claim to have nothing to do with the implementation of standardized testing. He compares them to a car driver who doesn't believe he or she should be held accountable for driving into a wall. Furthermore, Katzman believes that the talent of the students he was taught was not fully expressed through, the standard, through standardized tests. He claims it's just an utter disrespect for educators and kids, married to an utter incompetence. Standardized tests are, very, are revised every 12 years, where they always reach the headlines as better than ever, where in reality they are just as useless as before. And the sad fact is that the kids' parents who have the deeper, a deeper wallet have the higher advantage. Lastly, consider the fact that every student is different. They can't all be taking the same exact test. For example, why would a blossoming artist have to be well-versed in science? But I have to burst your bubble. As much as we loathe standardized testing, it's important to know that they have benefits. And I would like to forewarn my fellow classmates about the fact that their futures are drowning with standardized tests. To get into a graduate school, to get a license, to be a professional practitioner in many fields, to get a promotion in the military, these all require you to take a standardized test. Of course, we can all be thankful for the doctors who have taken standardized tests in order to qualify for completing a life-saving surgery. But these tests are not the same. We are surrounded by all of these bubbles that we have to fill. Instead of being so against the system, we should try to beat it. This, of course, is the problem because it's already been done. There are tips, tricks, preparation books, etc. But either way, these standardized tests are evident, inevitable part of our lives, no matter what we do. Unfortunately, that's all true. Standardized testing won't go away. It all started in the US in the early 1900s to determine one's individual IQ. 
During the First World War, the Army needed a way to determine which soldiers were officer material. And eventually, these tests have been made for colleges to see which students are college material. Standardized tests first came from the organization ETS, or rather Princeton's Educational Testing Services, founded by Henry Chauncey, the Dean of Harvard, and Deverell Colt Joseph, the president of the New York Life. Standardized testing has exponentially grown from there. These tests are used to measure a student's capabilities to be just like everyone else. Not only do these tests appear in high school, but they, always have gr they have also grown into the college and professional realm. Regrettably, we don't live in a perfect world with perfect people, and that results in certain standards we have to force ourselves to reach. While the pendulum today has swung in the direction of too much testing to how testing can be beneficial, the point is, while there may be Overkill that stifles creativity and critical thinking and the overemphasis of the SAT slash ACT. For college admissions, I want all of us to take a step back and realize that as Vanessa said, we are not perfect. We are all completely different human beings. We shouldn't let this be the only means to an end. We must go beyond and burst this education bubble. Thank you.